Yeah, uh, just uh, had a good Monday and a good Tuesday. Uh, Matt Jones had some surgery there on Monday, uh, so we, we feel like he came out of that surgery well, and we'll, we'll see how that progresses. Uh, Ronald Powell has not practiced so far this week. We're hoping to get him on the field today and, uh, and see how he moves around there. But uh, Missouri's got a good football team. Gary's done a great job there on his 13 years, and uh, right now they lead the SEC in turnover margin. That has a lot of reason why they're 6-0. and They're explosive offensively and playing really well on defense. And so we have our work cut out for us, that's for sure. I'll open up for any questions. Coach, first we have Chip Howard of KZNE Radio. Well, what's impressed you most about this Missouri team as you've looked at them? Well, I think, you know, more than anything, last year they were pretty banged up. I mean, they came into our game and they had a, a makeshift offensive line. They had a bunch of different guys that were missing. And obviously, um, you know, Franklin, who's hurt now, was hurt last year for, for most of the season. So anytime you lose your quarterback, it makes it difficult. So uh, they stayed healthy, number one. Number two, they, uh, you know, offensively they've been very balanced. They spread you out. They create space plays. you got to tackle in space versus them. Uh, they they got three outstanding backs that are that are all guys that uh, can make you pay if you miss a miss a play in space or you miss fit a run. Uh, they're accurate throwing the football. They're huge at the receiver position. The size of these guys are all six two plus six five six six. Tough matchups uh, down the field, but they're going to make you play in space. And then defensively, you know I think Sam and Ely are two of the better ends in our league. I mean those guys are. Uh, Sam, I think, is leading the SEC in sacks and tackles for a loss, and both of those guys are able to pressure with four guys rushing. Uh, they do a good job on the back end. They're leading the SEC in interceptions. So they've certainly played very well together as a football team, and they've got an outstanding returner, Marcus Murphy. Will, will you defend them differently than you would if Franklin was going to be in the lineup? No, I think they run their offense. They've had great success over the years, number one, and number two this season, uh, doing what they do. And uh, I think you know, Mark's a good player, and uh, certainly not going to do a whole lot of changing to, to, uh, for, for what they've done. They've been very successful. Thank you. <clears throat> Jason Leisure, with the Palm Beach Post. Uh, Will, we heard something about this last week. Is there an arrangement with the kickers where one of them is going to kick from a certain distance and the other one will take the longer kicks? Well, Austin's got a little stronger leg than Frankie does, and so we feel pretty comfortable from about the 30 in with Frankie. And then if anything past that, we right now we would probably look at Austin in those situations, also depending on uh, the week, you know, going up to, to game time and how they have kicked in those situations. <laughs> but both of those guys certainly are capable. And who else do you have to choose from if you need another kicker? That's Those are the only guys right now that will travel. Brad's obviously a guy that's, that's repped and, and played and, and done pretty well with his opportunities. On your roster, though? That Brad, those, those three would be the only three. Okay. Next is Samuel De La Cruz of ESPN College Game Day. Morning, Coach. Morning. In in terms of the coaches poll, how much in favor are you that that poll makes up one third of the BCS standings? Makes one third of the BCS standings? Yes, sir. Nah, that's fine with me. I guess I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that stuff. Coach, how much time and thought do you think coaches put into making a poll? I don't know. I, I don't vote, so I don't. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't comment. Thanks, coach. Next is Ty Lebo of Sports Radio 810. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you said that uh, you know that you expect Missouri to run the same offense with Matty Mock in there. What do you know about Matt, uh, and how much tape have you seen? He just got to play a little bit last week. Uh, how do you prepare for a guy you don't know as much about? <laughs> well, he's played, you know, sporadically through the through the season for them in some situations. And again, I mean, he's a, a parade All American coming out of at a high school there in Ohio. And a guy that uh, you know, I, you know, athletically can do everything that they want to do. Ran the same offense. I think his father was a high school coach there, and uh, ran a very similar offense there in high school. So he's been running this system for a while. Uh, he fits very well what they do. Does the offense look a lot like it looked when you faced Missouri back when you were at Texas? Are they kind of running the same way now? Uh, from a from a spread standpoint, yes, uh, you know, and and uh, a lot of the same ideas. Obviously, Josh, you know, uh, calling it now. Uh, certainly everybody's got their own twist of what they want to do a little differently, and um, obviously he's done a great job uh, this season with their offense. And a general question, you, you dealt with both A&M and Missouri when you were at Texas as an assistant. Are you surprised at all with the success that they've had at this point? Missouri's on top of the East. 
you know, Texas A&M obviously made a big splash last year with the Heisman Trophy winner and, and winning some games. Are you surprised with how they've come in and, and kind of acclimated themselves to the SEC at this point? Well, not at all. You know, I got, you know, obviously great respect for Gary Pinkle and the job he's done at Missouri. He's an outstanding football coach. He's a, he's a ball guy. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're a difficult team to get ready for, uh, you know, from the standpoint of offensively, the different issues they give you. Uh, the spreading the field, creating space plays. You've got to make plays in space. You've got to tackle in space. And, and I think they've done a good job of, of recruiting those type of guys. Dave Steckle, their defensive coordinator, a guy I got a lot of respect for as well. They're hard-nosed. They're tough on defense. They've recruited well, and they've developed their players well. I think there was a run there for Missouri where they had a first-round draft pick in about five straight drafts. So obviously they do a good job of evaluating, and they do a good job of developing their players. So that doesn't shock me at all. Uh, and, you know, Texas A&M's got a great tradition and history of good football, and Kevin Sumlin's done a great job. And obviously, uh, you know, Johnny Manziel's been a, been an outstanding player for them, but. They've had some good offensive linemen. Uh, you know, had some good pass rushers last year defensively. I haven't seen them as much, obviously, this year since we don't play them. Uh, but they've got a great recruiting base. And I think, obviously, Arkansas recruiting in the state of Texas and Texas A&M being in the state of Texas, Missouri's roster is full of Texas kids. Well, it helped in the Big 12 because most of the schools were in Texas. But certainly, uh, you know, A&M being in College Station, and that gives them – the SEC a, a, a stronghold for those three schools, especially in the state of Texas, which is a great recruiting base. Thanks, is Edward Ashoff of ESPN.com. Coach, can you just talk about with some of the offense you're going to face in the next few weeks, how important is it for this defense to start getting more from your offense? Well, we just need to play well defense. Our defense doesn't need to worry about what our offense does. They need to play well. We didn't play very well Saturday in Baton Rouge, and you got to credit LSU for that. So, uh, you know, we just need to play better up front. We need to play blocks better up front. We need to do a better job cutting people off down the field, and, uh, defending the pass, and, and defending the run. And they need to, our defense needs to worry about what our defense needs to do. And for this offense, what have you seen has been the, the biggest issue, uh, especially, you know, the, the Miami game, the, the LSU game? Has it been mostly protection? Well, I mean, the Miami game was turnovers. We had over 400 yards of offense. You know, we probably threw the ball as well as we have this season in that game. Uh, and then, you know, in the LSU game, we just didn't create enough explosive plays. I mean, it's hard to, you know, put together those 12, 14 play drives. We got to be more explosive, throwing the ball and running it. Uh, but we didn't, we didn't create enough on, in either phase in the game. And the, well, there's some protection issues. Absolutely, they did a good job. Uh, they're a very athletic football team, and, and when they're able to create some space plays, especially late in the game, when you have to get in that type of game uh, to catch up, they're going. That's that plays to their strengths uh, at LSU right now. They do a good job of rushing the passer. They got long, athletic guys. Uh, so we've got to be more balanced in what we do, throwing the football in the earlier downs and continuing to run the football throughout the game. Thanks. Thanks. It's Pat Dewey, the Gainesville Sun. Hey, Will, uh, can you talk about when you watch a uh, video of, uh, of Missouri, do you see a team that is remarkably better from the one last year, obviously, that went 5-7? and seven? <laughs> I do from the standpoint of just continuity, Pat. I mean, I, you know, they were really banged up through the year. They lost a bunch of guys through the season. They've recruited very well. They got three backs that fit what they do extremely well. They're extremely talented at the receiver position, difficult matchups. Uh, Franklin was playing at a very high level, and they were doing a good job up front. Uh, then defensively, you know, again, last year I felt like they did a, a good job on defense. And, uh, you know, Sam and Ely are two guys that are going to be NFL players. They're going to play on Sunday. They got good cover guys on the back end. They play well together. Uh, you know, they do they do a good job. They, they, they've got a good staff and, and – uh, and their guys play hard. They play with an edge. I think uh, they started 11 seniors last year, last week, and obviously they'll only start 10 because of Franklin being out. But what what kind of differences? I mean, what does that mean for a team when you can start 10 seniors like that? Well, you got six seniors on defense starting for them. At number one, it's just a lot of turns and reps. You got a bunch of guys that have taken a bunch of snaps, and then you look on the offensive side of the ball. The left side of the line is is uh, uh, two seniors. Uh, you know, obviously Eric Waters, a tight end, has been there for a while. And then uh, uh, Washington and Lucas, the two wideouts, are their leading receivers or seniors. So, uh, you know, anytime you uh, have a top-end class of uh, of guys that are productive playmakers for you, it certainly helps. Thanks. Next is Mark Long of the Associated Press. Yeah, hey, Will, I was just wondering if you had any update on Easley. He indicated yesterday, I think, on social media that he was uh, headed up to Pensacola for surgery. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, excuse me, his surgery is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It is tomorrow, and mm -hmm. that's going to be Dr. James Andrews up there? Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Next is Brandon Marcello of AL.com. Hey, Coach, just a little off topic, but uh, just I'm working on a piece about Johnny Manziel and defending him. What do you remember from last year's game and obviously that being at the beginning of the season, things kind of changed quite a bit with his development. What, what do you guys do uh, that really work well? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, he, he just he's an outstanding player. But uh, the thing that's difficult is the off-rhythm plays, the things you can't defense. And that's where you see so many times he's, in a, you know, in a passing situation and he drops back and, you know, everybody may be covered or his first read or his progression's not there. And then he creates things with his legs. He, he's fast. He's extremely fast. He's extremely quick. He's got great pocket presence of when to escape and when to stay in the pocket. Uh, and, and his receivers do an outstanding job in scramble drill of, of getting open. And he's a guy that just is, presents so many issues because, you know, you, there's no defense to cover him for another time. You, now you got to rely on athleticism and space, and you got to you got to have some playmakers on the back end to make some plays. And you know that's what we were able to do. We we tried to as best we could to keep him in the pocket and push the pocket to where you know he couldn't create those off rhythm plays because that's where he creates so many explosives down the field.